Okay, in this video we will be building a discounted cash flow model. Discounted cash flow analysis is focused on the time value of money. Essentially what you are doing in a DCF is projecting the future cash flow of a company, project, or asset. Looking at those cash flows in year 1, year 2, year 3, 4, and 5, and well into the future to determine the value of those cash flows today. This is known as present value. And present value is determined by your cost of capital. Let's look at a quick example to help think about cost of capital. Let's assume you have a choice between $1 million now or $1 million a year from now. Certainly you would prefer $1 million today because you want to be compensated for the one-year delay. But at what incremental value would you change your mind and wait that year? This is an easy way to think about your cost of capital. You are unlikely to wait one year with no gain. But would you consider it if there were a 5% gain? Or a 50% gain? Another principal variable that determines cost of capital is risk. The risk-free rate is how you feel you should be compensated simply for waiting one year. If you knew with certainty that your yield would be achieved, you might be willing to wait a year for a 5% growth. The risk premium is the yield you require if your cash flow might not materialize. If you were concerned that there might be loss of principal, you might require a 50% growth. So let's go back to our model. In this model, we will be performing a discounted cash flow analysis on an asset. This will provide the template for our discounted cash flow analysis. It's quite simple, and we should be able to work through it quickly. To give this analysis some context, we're going to assume that you're retiring, and you're looking for an asset to acquire that will provide cash flow. Let's assume the asset you're considering is a boat. This boat. In reality, this is not a good idea. But in our example, we're going to assume that the boat will cash flow an equal amount every year as you rent it out to tourists. So the first step is to project the cash flow your boat will generate. Let's assume that through market data, you determine that you can rent your boat out to tourists for $750,000 a year. This is a bit of a magical boat. Now let's assume that on a cash basis, all boat expenses come out to about $500,000 a year. Your boat cash flow would then just be revenue less expenses. Now let's assume that when you look at your retirement savings, you decide that you need to yield 10% to retire comfortably. And that we use that assumption for the cost of capital. With our cost of capital, we can determine our discount factor, which we will use to determine the present value of these cash flows. The discount factor is calculated using this formula. So we will input that same formula for each year. Remember to use F4 to fix a cell raised to the year. Enter. You may notice that I referenced what looks like text, but this is just formatting. The value of this cell is actually 1. It's a cool little Excel trick. Just go to Format Cells and put the text in quotes and a 0. With that formula inputted, we can drag it across and use Control R to paste across. Now to calculate the present value of your cash flows above, Reference the cash flow and multiply by your discount factor and paste this across. Even though it is unlikely, I wanted to project the same cash flows across the five years so that you could see the effect of time and how value diminishes. Another way to think of this is that five years from now, $250,000 is equivalent to $155,000 today. But obviously you hope your retirement will last more than five years. So we have to determine a value 
of your boat's cash flows in perpetuity, and for that we will calculate terminal value. First we'll reference cost of capital, and then, oh, wow, spelling error, bear with me, result. Then we have to pick the rate at which cash flows will grow in perpetuity. And for this example, we will assume that cash flows remain constant, even though it's a slightly silly assumption, and therefore our growth rate in perpetuity will be zero. The formula for terminal value is equal to cash flow in your last projected year multiplied by 1 plus your growth rate in perpetuity divided by your cost of capital minus your growth rate in perpetuity. With our terminal value calculated, we can determine the value of the boat. To do that, we will sum the present value of all cash flows, or rather, all projected cash flows, with the present value of our terminal value. To find the present value of our terminal value, select your terminal value and multiply it by the appropriate discount factor, which is the discount rate calculated for the final year of your projection. The sum of the present value of your projected cash flows with the present value of your terminal value will give you the value of your boat. So what conclusions can we draw? What this discounted cash flow analysis states is that this boat is worth $2.5 million today based on this analysis and that you would be willing to purchase this boat for $2.5 million with a cost of capital of 10% because it cash flows $250,000 every year. I'd like to point out quickly that the boat value and terminal value being equal is just a mathematical coincidence. This is not something you would expect in a regular discounted cash flow analysis and in fact if you change any of the variables, say your growth rate in perpetuity is 1%, you will find that the values vary. Or maybe more realistically, negative 5% as your boat loses value, you will again see a discrepancy. But let's go back to our original example. There's a couple things I'd like to point out. The first is that if you project your cash flows out far enough, say to year, 138, which doesn't make a lot of sense because few people have that kind of foresight. But just to make a point, if you take this sum, and you'll see that in the final year, the present value of $250,000 is less than $1, you will note that you arrive at nearly the same value sum. as our analysis using terminal value here. And if you continued the projection to the last cent, these two values would be equal. As I mentioned before, this is a very basic DCF, but fully functional and a good way to introduce the components. If you're watching these videos and thinking that you might like to conquer Wall Street, the discounted cash flow models will be a bit more complex and most likely focused on companies, but we'll work through those next. In the video that follows, we will use an integrated financial statement model to perform our discounted cash flow analysis. We'll start with the calculation of free cash flow, then the weighted average cost of capital, calculate the present value of cash flows in very similar fashion then determine firm value using the perpetuity growth rate method and the EBITDA multiple method. And finally, I will introduce the NPV formula. And with that, we're done.